Hello, Raw Mithril here once again, and the rest of the Silent Hill footage is finally recorded, so we're going to be starting those videos up pretty soon here. But before we get into that, once more, I just want to thank all my viewers, everyone who enjoys my videos. Thank you so much. I just recently hit over 600 subscribers. In fact, at the time of recording this, I have 612. So thank you very much to each and every one of you. Everyone who watches my videos but doesn't subscribe, thank you. Basically, everyone who enjoys my work, thank you. That's what really keeps me going, is just knowing people like what I do. Also, apparently, I have uploaded, before all this, 223 videos. Dear gods, has it really been that many? Uh, <laughs> I didn't think I'd made quite that many, but apparently I have. And one other thing of note, I was actually sent some Silent Hill fan art. This was sent in by, and forgive me if I don't say this right, I've heard at least two or three pronunciations for this, but this was sent in by Zaki Orichalcum. And <laughs> I love this piece. This was very nice. This is about how I felt going through the school area, definitely. Way too many mumblers. The detail he put into this is very, very nice. The uh, the way he drew everything, uh, having my kind of paranoid ramblings of wondering if someone's in this classroom with me. And if we zoom in here, the fact that the mumbler's dagger has my name on it. <laughs> Definitely felt that way while playing the game. Thank you very much for this work. I greatly appreciate it. This was awesome, and I loved receiving this. So, thank you again, Zaki Orichalcum. And with that, it's time to get to the actual footage. Let's go! Hello, Raw Mithril here once again, and it's time to get back to Silent Hill, because there's plenty of extra things to show off around here. Starting with the options screen. Yeah, I know that doesn't sound too exciting, but I hadn't been here before. Now, most of these options are pretty self-explanatory, really. The main thing I want to show, though, is when you hit R1, you end up on an extra options menu. You can set different things here, like you can change the blood color if you want. Green, violet, black. I like plain old red bloody goodness. Walk run control normal or reverse, it makes it sound like you run by default and have to hold a button to walk. That's kind of strange. You can turn auto-aiming off if you're so inclined. Me, eh, it's better than nothing, so I usually keep it on. Now here's the main one I want to talk about, the bullet adjust. Currently I can set this up to times two, meaning every box of ammo I find is doubled. Say a box of ammo has ten bullets, this means I get twenty for every one I pick up. Rather nice, that. You can set this up to times nine. You get an extra point in bullet adjust for every time you complete the game up to nine. The PAL version changed this, and you can only get up to times six, depending on how many of the five endings you've seen. So, yeah, either way, it's nice to have for people who prefer to make their point known with firearms. So let's load up the next fear. There's a key thing that I want to point out about starting a next fear game. And here it is now. You start by waking up in the cafe. You don't start out at your wrecked jeep. You don't have to walk down the bloody nightmare alley. So, that's rather nice, actually. You can actually also use the start button to just skip past cutscenes and conversations, if you're so inclined. It does save time nicely. And speaking of saving time, I'm only actually going to be showing things that are different and things that I've been requested to show. So, yeah... I'm not going through the entire game five times on camera. Right, so with that, see you in a few moments. So one thing I was specifically asked to do was to show off the weapons that I got, but never really used. First one being the kitchen knife. It has little in the way of stopping power, or power of any sort, really. Against that air screamer, I mean, I had to stomp, I had to stab it eight times before it even fell down, so I could stomp it. So yeah, the stab is really the only move it has with any stopping power. Had I done the side to side slash, that air screamer probably would have been able to attack me. 
it is fairly good against groaners, though. If this one will turn and face me, that is. Come on. I see you, I know you see me. The side-to-side -side slash has basically no power. But the stab can actually be fairly good if you can catch something right with it. The groaners are fairly susceptible to that due to their generally easy to predict attack patterns. Sometimes it can still become an exchange of blows. So the thing is with the knife, chances are you're still gonna have better options around than this thing. Uh, see what I mean about it becoming an exchange of blows. And pretty much the occasional air screamer that's nice enough to land right in front of you and groaners are about the only enemies you'd even want to consider taking on with the knife. Mumblers, puppet doctors and nurses, hanged scratchers, I don't think so. So, yeah, the knife... Why bother? Seriously, against anything else you're just asking for trouble. Knife against a mumbler? Are you insane? And this is just one single mumbler, mind. Come on now, I mean, when's the... When's the last time you remember them only sending one mumbler at a time after me? It hasn't even fallen down to where I could stomp it yet. And I'm using the powerful stab attack. I killed it, but at what cost? I'm at red health, breathing hard from the effort, and that was just a single mumbler. They like to send them after you in groups of four in hard mode, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Definitely not. So apparently some of my viewers really wanted to see Harry suffer. I don't really know what to make of that, but anyway, they wanted to see some deaths. Specifically, I was asked to show a couple of instant deaths. One of which is what happens if you don't get away from Splithead fast enough during the second phase of the battle with him. So that's what we're showing this time. While I'm doing this part of it, that gives me an opportunity to talk about hard mode. In hard mode, it seems like the main thing they do is just dramatically increase the number of enemies that appear. For instance, they were doing things like throwing four mumblers at me at a time in the dark side school. So that was just pure evil. Also notably, enemies do take more shots to kill. For instance, the split head takes more than two shots now in the mouth to kill with the shotgun even. So there is that. I don't know if enemies actually do extra damage to you or not though. Still hard mode lives up to its name. Okay, here we go. Come on, Splithead, don't you hear the dinner bell? And there you go. Kind of weird and not particularly gory or anything, just <laughs> kind of silly more than anything else, but there you go.